makes provision for me in the sanctuary at the mercy seat. and sisters, we are going to look at something very, very critical. We are going to look at the what? The undeniable facts about the three angels' messages. And today, we are going to look at this very one, which says the what? The three angels' message is connected to the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. So brothers and sisters, we are going to study this matter today to see how the what? To see how the three angels' messages, all of the three angels, and not even living one, how all the three angels are what? All the three angels are connected with the heavenly sanctuary, the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. And that is going to be our study today. Amen. So brothers and sisters, this is very, very important that we understood this point very, very well. There is a lot of debate in the Christianity today whether there is a sanctuary in heaven. There's a huge, huge debate whether there is a sanctuary in heaven. You understand? And for that matter, we will understand the future. Why? Why does... Where, why is there a controversy over whether there is a sanctuary or there is not a sanctuary in heaven? And that is the battle that is being fought right now. But we are going to see the three angels' messages of Revelation 14 from verse 6 to 12 are highly linked to the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. So now, let us go back. Is there a sanctuary in heaven? Now let's see what the Bible says. Amen. It says, the Bible says, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. This is Exodus chapter 25 and verse 8. The Bible says, brothers and sisters, that God told Moses to tell the children of Israel, to make him a sanctuary that he may what? That he may dwell among them. Amen. So now the question would be, but how was it going to look like? Remember the question, the bigger question is, is there a sanctuary in heaven? How was it going to look like? Look at what the Bible says, Exodus. I hope you're writing. We are going to first answer whether there's a sanctuary in heaven. According, the Bible says, Exodus 25, verse 9, the Bible says, according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle. Look at this. The Bible says in verse 8, they were supposed to make him a sanctuary. But he says here, it was supposed to be to what? It was supposed to be according to the pattern. There is a pattern or the reality that this, a sanctuary or tabernacle that it was going to follow. The Bible says, according to all that I will show thee, that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. So brothers and sisters, when Moses went into Mount Sinai, when he went into Mount Sinai, the Bible says, brothers and sisters, God told him as he was writing down that the people, the children of Israel, should make him a sanctuary that he may dwell among them. Amen. 
But according to what we are reading here, okay, according to what we are reading here, we are seeing here, the Bible says, according to all that I will show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle. So there was another tabernacle, which was a pattern. And this pattern was supposed to be followed. This mapping and pattern was supposed to be followed by Moses as he was instructing the builders of the tent, the tent or the, 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 the temple or the sanctuary in the wilderness. And the Bible says, after the pattern of the tabernacle, and what? Let's go to read. And the pattern of all the instruments thereof. So, in other words, this tabernacle also had the instruments in it. The true tabernacle or the real one, the pattern which he was supposed to follow, it also had what? It had the instruments thereof. Even, even so shall ye make it. Amen. Let's continue to read. The Bible says, so we have seen uh, it was supposed to be after the what? After the pattern, even the instruments, it was supposed to follow the pattern of the instruments of the other tabernacle. Now, let's continue to read Exodus 25 and verse 40. Look at Exodus 25 verse 40 again. The Bible says, according to all that I show thee, after the what again? The pattern of the tabernacle, and again what? The pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. So Moses was supposed to follow the, tab the pattern of the tabernacle. There is a tabernacle, which was the real one, of which Moses was going to copy and make this one, which was going to be in the wilderness. What was the reason? The first verse said, let them make me a sanctuary that he may dwell. The, the Bible says he wanted to dwell among his people. So let's continue to read Numbers chapter 8 and verse 4. The Bible says, let's continue to read. We are trying to find out whether there is a sanctuary in heaven. The Bible says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speak unto Aaron and say unto him, when thou lightest up the lamps, the seven lamps, we shall give light over against the candlestick. So we see the lamps on the candlesticks. And Aaron did so. He lighted the lamps there, the Bible says, over against the candlestick as the Lord did what? Command Moses, as the Lord commanded Moses. And this work of the candlestick was of beaten, of beaten gold unto the shaft thereof, unto the flowers thereof, was the beaten work according to what again? According unto the pattern which the Lord showed Moses. So he made the candlestick. Is there a sanctuary in heaven? Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter eight and verse five. Please follow this carefully. Is there a sanctuary in heaven? Hebrews eight, five, the Bible says, talking of Moses, that the things he was do doing, the Bible says, who serve, according to those priests that were serving in that sanctuary, the Bible says, who serve unto the example, and what? Shadow of heavenly things. As Moses admonished of God, when he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the, what? Pattern showed to thee where? In the mount, in Mount Horeb or at Mount Sinai. So brothers and sisters, we see that indeed brothers and sisters, that there is a sanctuary in heaven. Remember, we are studying how the three angels messages is highly connected to the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. We have seen that God told Moses to make a sanctuary after the pattern of the tabernacle. And this tabernacle we are seeing here, let's read it again. The Bible is showing here that this tabernacle is 
a shadow, the one he was making, the things Moses was doing, they were example and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle for see, he said he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee where in the mount is there a sanctuary in heaven. We have already seen it in Hebrews 8, 5, but let's add more meat on it, okay? Let's add more meat on it. Let's now go to Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 1 and 2. Hebrews 8, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. Remember, in verse 5, it says, Those priests were as example and shadow of heavenly things. Now let's read Hebrews 8, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, now of the things which we have spoken, this is the psalm. This is the, 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 the real thing now, the psalm of it. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. A what? A minister of the sanctuary. Did we have priests in the earthly sanctuary? Yes. Now Jesus, the Bible says, who is a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. So the other tabernacle, brothers and sisters, was pitched by who? It was pitched by Moses under the divine guidance, guidance because he was supposed to follow the pattern that was in heaven, brothers and sisters. So whatever was in the earthly sanctuary, it has somehow, somewhere, how it is reflected. It was reflecting the true tabernacle of the heavenly sanctuary. Let's read it again, okay? It says, now of the things which we have spoken, this is the psalm, okay? The Bible says, this is the psalm. We have such an what? We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. That also tells us that there's a throne in heaven. Amen. And this, this throne is where? In the sanctuary. Because the Bible says Jesus is a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. So, brothers and sisters, I want us to really understand this matter very, very carefully. Amen? So now, let's continue to study. Let's now go to the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Remember, if you want to know the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, what do you do? You study the, the shadow or the figure of the sanctuary that Moses made in, in the wilderness when God admonished him to make a sanctuary. Amen? So we follow, we have to study the earthly sanctuary that Moses had made in order to understand the, um, in order to understand the one in the heavens. So brothers and sisters, this, this brothers and sisters was the sanctuary. It had a gate or the, the main entrance it had the altar of sacrifice. It had the labor here. It also had this other one here. It had what we call the tabernacle because of course the entire thing is tabernacle, but this is, when I say uh, my house, it also includes the court, right? <laughs> of course, but this is the most important thing, the real house now. When you enter get of someone, you have entered into his house, but going to the real house, you go into this one. So this one is the tabernacle, as we see here. There was the altar of burnt offering, there was a gate, there was a laver here, this was the outer court. The, the laver and the altar of burnt offering was outside here. That's why the Bible says, of course, we are not studying the sanctuary right now, okay? We are not studying the sanctuary in detail, but when we shall study, we shall see all these instruments 
um, when I will be reading the text, but I've not read the text on this because of time. So this is the tabernacle. Look at this. What was in the house or the tabernacle itself? This one here, the tabernacle, this one, the house or the tabernacle or the temple or the sanctuary. What was in it? Remember the Bible says, let them make me a sanctuary that I might dwell among them. So this is the tabernacle, brothers and sisters, um, that Moses had to make. So now we are going to see what was inside where God dwelt because he dwelt in a house. Okay, let me say this so that we may go on to understand. God does not dwell in the temples made with the hands. That's what, what the Bible says. But why did he tell them to do this? Now, God did not dwell literally there, but he showed his presence in that temple. You understand? Because the Lord dwelleth not in temples that made with the hands, but his honor and his visible symbol of his presence with the children of Israel was manifest where? It was manifest in the sanctuary. God dwelt among his people to be acquainted with his divine character. You understand? And we need to really understand this. This was a visible symbol which was telling them of the real heavenly things and how they are made. So where did God dwell? Now let's go back. Where did God dwell? Let's read what was inside the tabernacle. Listen, the Bible says, and thou shalt wear up the tabernacle according to the fashion, again, the fashion, the pattern, the fashion thereof, which was showed thee where? In the mount. In the mount, remember, brothers and sisters. Now, let's continue to read. We are reading, brother, this is Exodus. I did not write it here, but it is Exodus chapter 26 from verse 30 to 36. Okay, let's read it again. The Bible says, those who are writing, please write. Exodus 26, verse 30 to 36. Please write that. I did not put the text here, but that is it. The Bible says that thou shalt wear up the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof, which was showed thee where? In the mount, thou shalt make a veil. A veil, there was a veil. I wonder what was its use? Let's study it. So there was a veil within the tabernacle. Let's go to read. Thou shalt make a veil, a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen of crowning work with the cherubims or angels, cherubims shall it be made. Verse 13, one, the Bible says, thou what? Shall hang it upon four pillars of shitting wood. Of course, this one is of shitting wood. We, we really have to understand that this one of shitting wood because it was earthly, but the heavenly is made of gold. Thou shalt hang it upon the four pillars of shitty mood, overlaid with gold. Their hooks shall be of gold upon the four sockets of silver. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the, the takes that thou mayest bring in hither within the veil of the ark of the testimony. So you see now, he was supposed to put a veil within that tabernacle, brothers and sisters, Within, within that tabernacle, we are told, brothers and sisters, that he was supposed to make what? He was supposed to make a veil, and it was separating two places. The Bible says you will bring within, that is beyond, within the veil, the veil that we, was within, uh, the veil, remember, it was in the tabernacle. But within the veil, he was supposed to put what? The ark of testimony of the testimony, the ark of the covenant or the testimony, and the veil shall divide unto you between the holy and the most holy. So there was this veil was um, this veil, brothers and sisters. It was dividing the holy place and the most holy place. Now let's continue to read. And thou shalt put the mass seat upon the ark of the testimony, where? In the most holy place. Now let's connect the dots. That means within the veil, it is the most holy place. Because here up in verse 32, 
he said that thou, that thou mayest bring in thither, thither within the veil, the ark of the testimony. So the, within the veil, it means where was the ark of the, the testimony? In the most holy place of the sanctuary. So in the most holy place, there was the ark of the covenant. And I want us to really understand that very, very well. In the most holy place, there was the ark of the covenant. Where we find the ark of the covenant, brothers and sisters, that is what? The most holy. What defines the holy and the most holy are the instruments thereof. What made the holy place the holy place were the instruments within it. What made the most holy the most holy? Remember, that is where the ark was. Now, look at this. So, remember now, let's read it again. Let's read now, we are on verse 34. The Bible says, okay, this is verse 35 now, verse 35. And thou shalt set a table without the veil. So there was a table of showbread, which was outside, that is the holy place, right? And the candlestick over against the table on one side of the tabernacle toward the south, and thou shalt put the table on the north side. So brothers and sisters, let us go to the inside. How was it? How was it? How was it? So this is uh, the pictures you can see, the inside the tent or the tabernacle. You see here, when you look very carefully, let me bring it here. This is the table of showbread. This was the, the candlesticks with the lamps there of seven golden candlesticks. Now the most holy is where the ark of the testimony was. This one was what? This one was the altar of incense here just before the veil. Now, this is how it was. The, more, the holy and the most holy. So this one with the four pillars, you see this one here and this one here, these four pillars, brothers and sisters, this is where this veil, this huge thing, the veil here, I hope you can see it, is what separated the holy and the most holy. Now, where did God dwell? Did he dwell in the holy place or in the most holy? We will see as we continue to study. So brothers and sisters, Jesus tells that he said to them, make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. So there were two veils. The first veil was leading to the holy place. The second veil, this one here, was leading into the most holy. So this is the veil that separated two rooms in the heavenly, in the earthly sanctuary, which was a figure we saw of the earthly. So this is what was in the most holy place. The highest instrument of the sanctuary was in the most holy place. There was a what? There was the Ark of the Covenant. Remember the Bible says that he was supposed to put the master seat upon the covenant, the Ark of the Covenant. We see here two golden angels or cherubims covering cherubs. So now, let's go now. Please follow this carefully. Let's understand this ark before we go any further. Remember, this is the only the instrument that was in the what? Was in, that was in the most holy place, rather, of the sanctuary. Now, let us go to the book of Exodus 25, how did he make the ark? Exodus 25, okay, from verse 10. Exodus, Exodus 25, Exodus 25, and verse 10. Look at what the Bible says. And they shall make the ark of shitty wood. You see that? Then the height and all of it. The Bible says this shitty wood, it was a very bad, durable material. Shitty uh, trees and cedar, they are very durable. And the Bible says he was supposed to overlay it with what? With gold. 
and without shall thou lay it and make upon it a crown of gold round about. So round about the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of, of the Law, was supposed to have a golden crown. Now, when you go to verse 16, the Bible says, in verse 16, the Bible says, and thou shalt put into the ark the what? The testimony that I shall give thee. So what is the testimony that God was going to give Moses? Let's go to the book of Exodus 31. Please follow this carefully. Exodus chapter 31. Exodus 31 in verse 18. Okay. What was this? The Bible says, and he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of the testimony. Again, this is there. Tables of stone written with the finger of God. So you were supposed to what? To make at the two tables of testimony now, what does the word testimony here imply in the context? What does the, the word testimony here imp, um, imply in the context? Because testimony can mean many things, but the tables of the testimony that was supposed to be in the ark, what does it imply? Let's go to the book of Psalm 19 and verse 7. Please write these verses. If you're writing, you're doing the best job. Others just watch the video and go away. Please write. You understand? Write the things. Psalm 19 and verse 7. The Bible says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Do you see that? So God's law, the law of the Lord, which is perfect, God's law is perfect as God himself, because that is the real heart of God. The heart of God is his law of love. The Bible says the testimony of the Lord is sure. So sure here means it is what? Perfect. So the Bible says God's law is his testimony. If you have understood it, say amen. Okay, let's see also Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Psalm 78, okay, and verse, Psalm 78, verse 5. Please look at this. Don't take my word. Take God's word. The Bible says he established, for he did what? He established a what? A testimony in Israel or in Jacob and appointed a what? A law in Israel. So God's testimony, because it testifies of his character, it is the law. Amen. God's testimony is the law. God's testimony is the law. Here in the context, the testimony also in other contexts, if you read it, it also means the writings of the prophets which are in harmony with God's law. The testimony of Jesus, of course, the spirit of prophecy, the, the writings of the prophets. Now, please follow carefully here. Let's go also, the book of Isaiah. Please follow me carefully here. Isaiah chapter what? Chapter eight and verse 16. God's testimony is his law. The Bible says, bind up the testimony. Do you see that? seal the Lord among my disciples. Do you see that? To bind up, it means to seal. You understand? The testimony. Seal the law. So God's seal, of course, is found in the law. Seal the law among my disciples. So the testimony that God was going to give who? Now, let's go back again. Brothers and sisters, the testimony that God was going to give Moses, which was on the tables of stone, it was his law. It was his law. Note this carefully. It was his law, brothers and sisters. We are in the most holy place now. We are still finding out where did God dwell. Amen? 
Where did God dwell? Because he said he wanted to dwell among his people. Just the way he dwells in the sanctuary in heaven. He dwells in the sanctuary in heaven. That's the same pattern they were going to follow. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to Exodus, where we are reading Exodus 25. Please follow this carefully. The study may be a little bit long, but you need it. You need it, brothers and sisters, even if it takes a bit longer time. Okay? Let's go back in Exodus, where we are reading. Okay? Exodus chapter 25 and verse 16. The Bible says, Thou shalt put into the ark the testimony. Now we know it's God's law. Okay, we know it's God's law that I will give thee. And now he says he was supposed to make a what? Follow this carefully. He was supposed to make a mercy seat. Then he gives the length thereof, okay, of pure gold. This one was not supposed to be made of shitty wood or what? It was supposed to be of pure gold without any wood in it, earthly what? Okay, and the Bible says, and thou shalt make what? And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold. Do you see them? So the Bible says, and thou shalt make two cherubims of gold of beaten work. Shall thou make them? So he was supposed to make two angels of gold without any shit mood in them. Two angels of gold. And the Bible says, in the two ends of the master seat. So on this master seat, he was supposed to put two cherubims on both their sides and make one cherub on the one end and on the other cherub on the other end. Even of, of the mercy seat shall ye make it the cherubims on their ends thereof. Now let's listen now carefully. The Bible says, and the cherubims, all the angels, the cherubims shall stretch their wings on high, covering what? The mercy seat with their wings and their faces, we shall look one to another, not toward themselves, but towards the mercy seat shall the faces of cherubims be. That was so particular. You understand? And thou shalt put, listen, and thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark shall thou put the what again? the testimony. So inside of the ark was the testimony that God would give them. Follow this carefully. Now, on the mercy seat, verse 22, and there will I meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from where? From above the mercy seat. Follow that carefully. So God was going to dwell on the mercy seat. Now, the word seat, follow me carefully now, Okay, the word seat can also mean a throne. We saw that for those whom we have been studying with, right? So the word seat, the word seat can mean a throne. Let's see it in the book of uh, First Kings. We saw this, but I didn't want to read it. But anyway, let's read it. First Kings 2.19, First Kings 2.19. We shall come back to that. First Kings. First Kings, First Kings, chapter two, First Kings, chapter two, and verse nineteen. Okay. But Sheba thereof went unto the king Solomon to speak unto him, and the king rose up to meet her and bowed himself unto her. And sat down on his throne. Now look at this. And sat down on his throne and he caused a seat to be set for the king's mother. So you see there, a throne is the same as a seat. You understand? So even in First Kings, First Kings 10, okay. First Kings chapter 10 and verse 19. The throne, the throne, the throne. The throne had how many steps? Six steps. And on the top of the throne was round behind. And there were stays on their side on the place of the seat. You see? So the throne, 
is the same as the seed. Now let's go back to Exodus. The Bible says, verse 22, and there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the master seat, from between the two cherubims. So God's throne is between the cherubims. You understand? God's throne is between the cherubims. The Bible says, now let's see this. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 4 in verse 4, the, the Jews really understood this, 1 Samuel. So God dwells between the cherubims above the mass seat on the ark where inside there was God's law. 1 Samuel 4 in verse 4, the Bible says, so the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring forth hence the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth between the what? The cherubims. Did you see that? So God dwells between the cherubims, those two cherubims on the ark. Now, let's go back now, such that we may understand. We see the ark, the two cherubims. So this is the animation that was made. Well, of course, the staves. So the crown of gold, you see that? So here between the cherubims, there was the master seat. This was all the master seat, you understand, all around it. But on the ends of the mercy seat, between the cherubims, this is where God dwelt. And that's how now you can see. I think you can see. So the mercy seat was here. This is the mercy seat, brothers and sisters. The crown of gold, of course, this is the one, the poles, and the ark. But the Bible has said inside the ark, now follow carefully, there was the type of testimony of God's law or the commandments of God. Of course, when we read in the Bible, uh, we will read the book of Hebrews, we will come to that. There was Aaron's rod that budded in the ark and also the pot of manna. So there was also now here, it's very simple. It's removed, the two tables of the testimony, you can see them, the pot of manna and Aaron's rod that budded, which is in there. So, and the two cherubims, you see, and the master seat there and that's where the lord would dwell you understand brothers and sisters i want us to follow this very very carefully there is a most holy place in heaven let me repeat there is a most holy place where there's the ark because we have seen down here it was there but let's read this bible text with that we may see the bible says in the book of revelation revelation chapter 11 Revelation 11, verse 19. There is a most holy place even in the heavenly sanctuary. Okay. Revelation. Revelation chapter 11. And verse 19. The Bible says, those who are writing, to show that there is such a thing in the Bible and in, the, in, in heaven. The Bible says, and the temple of God was opened in heaven, or the sanctuary, or the temple of God, the tabernacle of God was opened in heaven. And there was seen where? In his temple, the ark again, here it is, the ark in heaven of his testament, of course, and there were lightnings because God is highly glorious. There were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hell. So brothers and sisters, there is a most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary. Do not be lied to. Of course, what you have to prove also from the Bible is that the temple of God, the temple is the same as the sanctuary, is the same as the tabernacle. You understand? So brothers and sisters, you will need to study the things such that we will understand the things because a crisis is coming, a crisis is coming. And many people take it for, for granted. So my brothers and sisters, there is a what? There is a sanctuary in heaven. Now, how are the three angels' messages, all of the three, not some, how are the three angels' messages connected to the heavenly sanctuary, the most holy place, the glorious most holy place where God dwells in the throne, Brothers and sisters, let's go to the first angel's message. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 7. Now we have begun to study now. 
Revelation chapter 14, Revelation chapter 14, verse 7. When you begin from verse 6, the Bible says, And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, harping the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Verse 7, saying with a loud voice, do what? Fear God, the first angel's message. Fear God and do what? Give glory to him. For what? For the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth, the sea, and the fountains of waters. Now, follow this carefully. The Bible says fear God. What is to fear God? What is to fear God? Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. What is to fear God? Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And verse 13, the Bible says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Do you see that? Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man, the Bible says. Now, when we also read God's commandments, the word commandments is the same as the law. Remember, we saw the testimony that was in the ark was the law. The, the, the word commandments also means the law. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 1, the Bible says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Do you see that? So the most holy place, we see the first angel's message saying, fear God and give glory to him. It is pointing to God's commandments. And where was God's commandments? In the ark, which was located where? In the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Because we have seen in the heavenly sanctuary, there's the ark of God's testament. Brothers and sisters, we need to get this clearly. We need to get this by God's grace. Amen? So we have seen the first angel's message saying, fear God and give glory to him. Also pointing to the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. So now, remember we, we find the law in the ark. Now, let's go back to the first angel's message. Let's go back to the first angel's message so that you may understand. The Bible says here, saying with a loud voice, fear God and do what again? And do what again, brothers and sisters? The Bible says, and give glory to him and give glory to him. Now, what is to give glory to God? When you go to 1 Corinthians, okay? 1 Corinthians, for those who have been studying with us, please, you understand this. 1 Corinthians 10 in verse 31, the Bible says, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do it all to the glory of God. Do all to the glory of God. So brothers and sisters, we give glory to God in what we eat, in what we drink, in whatsoever we do. Do you see that? So, which means in the most holy place, I must find um, eating and drinking, but mostly eating what we eat. Why? Because God's glory is also linked to, to the health message. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 8. Isaiah 58 verse 8. The Bible says, Then shall thy light, look at that. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. And thine health, you see that? Thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness, the Bible says, thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. So God's glory is his righteousness, but also it is in the health message, in the health, it shall, the, thy health shall spring forth. So in other words, in the heavenly sanctuary, I must find the health message in the most holy place. Now, when we go to Hebrews, now follow this carefully. When we go to Hebrews 9, Hebrews chapter 9, I hope you're following me carefully. Verse 3 and 4, look at that. 
Hebrews 9, verse 3 and 4. And after the second veil, or the inner veil, the, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had a golden censer, and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein in the ark there was what? The gold pot which had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, of course, and also the tables of the covenant, or the tables that of the, of the testament or the, the, the testimony. So brothers and sisters, we see here that in the ark, there was a golden pot of manna. What was manna? What was manna? If you remember very well, what was manna? Exodus, when you go to Exodus, those who are writing, please write it. Exodus 16, 31, you will find there was what? Exodus 15, 31, there was what, brothers and sisters? Manna was like carrying sea. You understand? It was a vegetarian or a plant-based diet. So in the most holy place, we find a plant-based diet. Remember the Aaron's rod that budded in the book of Numbers 17. You will read Numbers 17. Um, Aaron's rod that budded, brothers and sisters, follow this carefully now. The Aaron's rod that budded, what, was, what, what did it bring forth? It brought forth fruits like almonds and it was put into the ark. So the health message of what we eat and drink is right there in the most holy place. So the, the first angel's message links us and points us to where it points us to the most holy place. Even the diet. So when the first angel's message says, fear God and give glory to him, it is also pointing to the diet that is found in the most holy place of, of, of the sanctuary, of the heavenly sanctuary. Amen. Because many people ask me, uh, where do we read that in heaven there is manna even in the ark? The Bible says it. Okay, the book of Revelation, please, I will give it to you here. Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. Okay, Revelation 2, 17, the Bible says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and in the white stone I will write a new name. So the hidden manna, it is now in the heavenly sanctuary. Brothers and sisters, I tell you what, brothers and sisters, the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary is in a high connection with the three angels' messages. So that is the first angel's message. Now, we have not gone to worship him that made heaven and the, throne, the, the heaven and the earth. Remember, where he, does God dwell? He sits on the throne or the mercy seat, on the throne of mercy. You remember that? Yes. In the Bible says, when you read in the book of Revelation chapter, chapter 4 and verse 9 and 10, you'll find that they are, they are worshippers, the angels in heaven, they worship him that is sitting on the throne. You understand? And they worship him for one reason, because he is the creator of heaven and the earth. Please, you'll read Revelation chapter, chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. Now, Brothers and sisters, now we go to the critical one. The first angel's message. I told you it's going to be a bit lengthy, but it is quite important. This message is quite important. Brothers and sisters, now follow me carefully. Follow me carefully so that we may understand. The Bible says, fear God and give glory to him. We see the, all the things they are pointing us to the most holy place. Anyone that denies that there's a there is no most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary of the sanctuary, he can neither give glory to God. Amen. Now, let's go back to the first angel's message. Let's go back to the first angel's message. Okay. Let's go back to the first angel's message. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 7. Saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and the earth and the fountains of waters. The Bible says for the hour of his judgment is come. Okay. Where was it going to take place? Where does the judgment take place? 
Okay, now let's see this. In the book of Daniel, look at this, Daniel 7. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. Please follow this carefully. Daniel 7. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. The Bible says, I beheld till thrones were cast down. This casting down is being put in place. Okay, thrones were cast down. And on one of the thrones, the Bible says, and the ancient of days did sit. Ancient of days or eternal. Ancient means eternal. Ancient of days means eternal. Whose garment was as white as what? As snow. And the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne, the throne of the, of the ancient of days was like the fiery flame. And his wheels now, Look at this. Wheels are for movement, right? Uh, we will study that when we're studying the sanctuary message. Wheels are for movement, which means this throne can be moved from one place to another. So which means it, they were cast down, they were put in a place. It means before that they were not there. But let's study so that we will know where it was. The Bible says his wheels, the wheels for moving the throne as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him, and a thousand a thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. And the Bible says, What happened? And the judgment was set. And the what? The books were opened. So judgment began when he was on the throne. The hour of his judgment is come. Judgment was set. By what standard are we judged? Those who are writing, by what standard are we judged? James 2.12. If you want to know, you begin from verse 10. James 2 and verse 10 to 12. The Bible says, whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, we are dealing with the Ten Commandments here, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit adultery, because by the way, there's a lot of adultery today, there's a lot of immorality today, even among present to the believers, yeah, oh yes, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become the transgressor of the law. Verse 12, so speak ye and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Remember, and now I want us to connect the dots. In, in Daniel, please, let's connect the dots. In Daniel chapter, in Daniel 7, in verse 10, it says that the judgment was set and the books were opened, judging the people. Amen. But when we read in the book of in the book of James, chapter 2 and verse 12, the Bible says, So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. You see here? So judgment, now follow this carefully. Judgment can only take place where we find God's law, judged by the law of liberty. You, you follow that carefully. So brothers and sisters, we are judged by the law of liberty. That tells me, brothers and sisters, that this judgment that is going, that is going on must take place in the most holy place. Why? Because it is the most holy place that we find God's law in the ark. So the throne was taken from the holy to the most holy because it was it was brought to the holy in Revelation 4, but it was taken back in Revelation Daniel 7 because we, have, we were going to begin the judgment. So God was supposed to bring back his throne to where? To the most holy because that's where judgment takes place using the law. So the hour of his judgment is linked to God's law in the most holy place of the sanctuary. Do you get that, brothers and sisters? How the first angel's message is linked 
to the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary? Have you gotten it, brothers and sisters? We have people who are joking with the, with the, with the sanctuary message. They are joking with the judgment hour. They are playing around. We have all theologians. By the way, the, the entire, someone told me, but something is different. I told them, please, the conference of Seventh-day Adventists, which would have taught these things, is no longer teaching them. It may acknowledge that there's a sanctuary, but they don't believe. They don't believe, let me repeat, they don't believe that it is the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. So do they believe the first angel's message? No, why? Because had they believed that there's the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. In their writings, many people, as I said, have lost their bearings. This message has been lost sight of brothers and sisters. Now follow this carefully. So we have seen the first angel's message being linked to the most holy. Now let's go to the second. Now, how is the second angel's message linked to the most holy place of the sanctuary? How is the second angel's message? Now let's go to the second angel. What does the second angel say? Now look at this. Revelation, okay. Revelation chapter 14 and verse eight, the second angel, the Bible says, see, see this. And I want you to see this by God's grace. Are you ready? The Bible says, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. Okay. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So the Bible says, Babylon is fallen. Now, what is she fallen from? Babylon is fallen. Fallen from what? Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. Please, let's see what the Bible says. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 4. The Bible says, nevertheless, remember it is the apostolic church that became Babylon after apostatizing. The Bible says, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Why? Because thou has left thy first love. Verse 5. Remember from whence thou art fallen and repent. You see? She was fallen from her first love. She had forsaken. She had left. To fall, it means to leave. Have you seen it? Thou has left thy, fallen love, thy first love. That's why he's saying, therefore... Remember from therefore, from whence the standard in which you were, from whence thou art fallen. So, and because she had fallen, the Bible says, and repent and do the first works, or else I will come quickly and remove thy candlestick. Did he remove the candlestick from them? Yes. So the apostolic church, when it apostatized, when you read the book, Great Controversy, from page around of the era of spiritual darkness, if you read it, the candlestick was, give, was taken away from them and it was given to the church of Smyrna. It's the same church, but it, 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 the church of Smyrna had to take over. Now, brothers and sisters, listen to this. She's fallen from her first love, okay? What is love? What is love? Please look at this carefully. What is love, First John? First John chapter five, okay? First John chapter five and verse three to five. Look at this. Let's begin from verse two, okay? From verse two, verse two. First John chapter five, verse two and three. The Bible says, by this we know that we love the children of God when we keep, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. So brothers and sisters, 
She had fallen from her first love. She had left her first love. She had fallen from the keeping of God's commandments and she became Babylon. You understand? She left God's commandments. A church that forsakes God's love, it becomes Babylon. You see? Before we, the Bible says, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. John 15. Please don't take my word. Take God's word. John chapter 15. Okay. Uh, John 15, verse 9 and 10. Verse 9. Verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, As the Father has loved me, so I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So to abide in God is to keep his commandments. So, and also is to surrender, to entire surrender to his will, to his commandments. So brothers and sisters, look at this. God's love is manifested in obedience to his law of love. And that's why the Bible says in the book of Romans, Romans 13, Romans 13 in verse 10, the Bible says, let's read from verse, um, verse 8. The Bible says, or when no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Verse 10. Of course, you read the commandments. Uh, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, which we often do. Thou shalt not covet. This is last, lasting after women and other things like money. If there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. You understand? So the Bible says Babylon is fallen because she forsook her first love. So how did she fall into? What made her to fall? When you go to the book of uh, Hosea, chapter 14, and verse 1, Hosea, Hosea, chapter 14, and verse 1, the Bible says, O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine own iniquity. You see? So iniquity is a sin. Sin is the transgression of the law. So Babylon is fallen. So brothers and sisters, Babylon is fallen because she's not keeping God's commandments. Therefore, brothers and sisters, where do we find the commandments? Where do we find the commandments of God, brothers and sisters? We find the commandments of God in the most holy place of the sanctuary as we have seen. The temple of God was opened in heaven and in the temple within the veil, was seen in the ark of God's testament or God's commandments. So brothers and sisters, God's law is found in the ten, in, in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. There you say there is no, there is no what? There is no most holy place, brothers and sisters, of the sanctuary. You are saying what? You are saying there is no God's law. There's nothing like that. Brothers and sisters, do you see how far people can go? Do you see how important is the three angels message pointing us to our salvation? Brothers and sisters, let me come to a summary of this. Let's now go to the third angels message. The third angels message says what? So we have a little bit more of 10 minutes and then we close. The third angel's message. We go to the third angel's message. Revelation, Revelation chapter 14. Look at this. And I want you to see this. 
Revelation chapter 14 from verse 9 to 12 is the third angel's message linked to the linked to the most holy place of the sanctuary. It says, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the what? Worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says in the near future, people will worship the beast. But the question is, when they will be worshiping the beast and his image, eh, who will they really be worshiping? When people will worship the beast, who will they be worshiping? Look at verse uh, Revelation 13, verse 4. Please don't take my word. The Bible says, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him? So brothers and sisters, those that will worship the beast, who will they be worshiping? They will be worshiping the dragon. Who is the dragon? Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. Brothers and sisters, this is serious. We are looking at how the third angel's message is linked to the most holy place. Look at this. Revelation 12, verse 9. The Bible says, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So Lucifer was cast out of heaven. That's why we read in the book of, please follow this, Isaiah chapter 14, please follow this, Isaiah 14 and verse 12, we read, Isaiah 14 verse 12, the Bible says, how art thou fallen from where? From heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? The Bible says Lucifer fell from where? From heaven. Okay. That's why even Jesus himself in the book of Luke 10, 18. Okay. In the book of Luke 10 and verse 18, the Bible says, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Okay. Brothers and sisters, Satan fell from heaven. He was cast out of heaven. Now, where was he? Where was he? And what position did he have in heaven? Please follow this carefully. We are looking at the third angel's message being linked to what? Being linked to the most holy place of the sanctuary. Now let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 28. Okay. Ezekiel 28 and from verse 12. We are going to understand this. The Bible says, Son of man, take up the lamentation upon, upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of hosts, Thou sealest up the sun, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in, the, in Eden, the garden of God, every precious stone. So the Bible says there's a king of Tyrus here being addressed. And the Bible says he was sealing up the sun. He was perfect in beauty. So God was addressing a being, but of course, in the, in the picture of the king of Tyrus, but we are going to find out that he was addressing, by the way, Lucifer. The Bible says, thou has been in the Eden, the garden of God. So the king of Tyrus was never in heaven, the garden of God, but Lucifer has been there. The Bible says every precious stone was thy covering. So he was covered with precious stones. Then the Bible mentions them, the, the, the sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onks, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the cabango, gold, the workman, 
The Bible says, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Okay? But the Bible says, look at verse 14 and 15. The Bible says, this, this being it was describing, the Bible says, thou art what? The anointed cherub that does what? Covereth. Where did we read in our beginning? The anointed cherub that covereth. We read that in the book of Exodus, chapter 25. Follow this. Remember, we read even Jesus, even God, dwelling between cherubims. Now, the being that is being um, discussed at this moment, he was a what? A covering cherub on the mercy seat in the most holy place. The Bible says, God had set him so, I have set this so, thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou has walked up and down in the midst of the stones, in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till what? Iniquity or sin or transgression of God's law was found in thee. Brothers and sisters, we see even at the very beginning of the third angel's message, pointing us to the most holy, where the controversy began. Iniquity was found in the heart of what? Of Lucifer. He was a covering cherub. Do you remember, brothers and sisters? I hope you can remember this. He was a, a covering cherub. Do you remember that? Do you remember? Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Do you remember this? These cherubs we see, they were in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Iniquity was here in the most holy place. These were the anointed cherubs that would cover the glory of God that dwelleth between the cherubims. You understand? So brothers and sisters, God dwelt between the cherubims. So remember, the earthly sanctuary was a figure. And where do we find the ark? It is in the most holy place. So my brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, here we see for sure that the third angel's message, it is a highly, brothers and sisters, linked to the most holy place of the sanctuary. There is a lot to learn that the most holy place, the sanctuary in heaven, the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary is embodied. The messages are embodied within the three angels' messages. So brothers and sisters, part two will be coming on Thursday. And I want to end here, brothers and sisters. Make sure that you study these things. Make sure that you understand this matter. And may God bless you and bless you abundantly. Thank you for listening. Please continue to study God's word. Know God's word because the sanctuary message is vitally important. May God bless you and bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen.